well, what hashtags really should I use? And I started searching around and of course on the internet, at a Toastmaster website, I found this. So these are the top 10 hashtags that are most popular for Toastmasters. And Ruby or Nancy will post this into the chat box towards the end of our meeting today. So that way you can have it. So when you develop your hashtags, you can use this as the basic hashtags that you want to follow. Now, let's see. Oh, just before I go to post something to Instagram, I want to show you this because just before I hit that share button, look down here, right here, I can click this button and also post to Facebook. It turns out that Facebook has purchased Instagram. And so they're linked together. So it's very easy to send something over to Facebook as I'm doing Instagram. But I know, I know you're wondering, what do I post? What, what can I post? Yeah, I saw your three, but is there anything else? Yes. I did my homework. I went to Instagram and I looked at many, many different clubs on Instagram. And these are the things that they are posting onto Instagram. I'd like to point out some uh, a number of oh, member highlights and pictures, new member welcomes. You're going to see that. And isn't that neat where you can show somebody recognition right away? They show at your club for the first time or they get reinstated or they do their icebreaker and you can congratulate them. And here's what you do. You tag them on Instagram, so that way all their friends and family see the tag too. So now we're getting a conversation going about what's this Toastmaster thing you're going to? All right, let's see where, oh, I keep saying, oh, I get my reminders down here. But when I first started, I didn't know how to post things to Instagram. And typically Instagram is pictures. But you can see here, I'm not using primarily pictures. I need to say something, say something to draw people into my club. So I have gone to Canva. It's a free program, kind of looks like this. And you can see I'm using my color schemes, but uh, I can put the dates. Now I can name each one of these things that I have developed. But what I'm able to do, and for both these clubs on a Sunday afternoon, I can sit down, takes about an hour, and I can sit down on a Sunday afternoon and make all the postings I want to have for the next month. And then I just start to get ready to schedule. I've got the dates right there, ready to go. But when I first got started, I didn't know how to use Canva. My good wife showed me how to do it. But when I first started posting, I used PowerPoint. Now, when you, you go up to file and, and then hit new, you get an option of using a, an Instagram post. And it formats it in this square fashion, as you see here. Now, when I save these pictures, I save them as PNGs. But over on Canva, I use them as PNGs or save them as PNGs. But when you compare them side by side, the Canva clarity is so much better than the, the PowerPoint clarity. I don't know why. So that's why I kind of migrated hit and have stayed with Canva. But to get started, if you're comfortable with PowerPoint, get started there. But get started. All right, that's all the way out. But I, I have a question for you. Yes, go ahead. Our um, distinguished Beth, Beth Ramsey wants to know where to find, bear with me one second, I need to find this question. Where to find the homepage you were referring to before to make the, pages? The homepage for? And the free toast toast. Because oh, I like free. how you were updating it with the, um, with the next meeting. And we don't do that with downtown Ocala. We just have like a general open, but that was from the previous PR chair. So you don't have anything that no. looks like this? No. 
Now, is that when you, no, that's before you get it. No, we don't have, we have like pictures of our club and we have other things, but I kind of like what you've got there. Yeah, we want to drive. So where do you find, where do we, where do we edit that? Oh, as a site administrator, I won't click on it because this is a PowerPoint, but right here, you would click on login as site administrator. Okay. And then a, an additional button shows up between these two logins and it says administrative console. You click on that, you click on the home page, and you oh, can that's it. Very good. adjust it right then and there. So it, it's very easy to do. Now let's see if I got an escape button out of here. Oh, I do. Okay, I'm gonna take us back into social media. Now, I'm gonna take us over to Facebook, but as you may well know, and I hope you do, our next presentation is all about Facebook, and that's Nancy Wilkins, and she's going to present that in the next hour. So I'm just touching on it here for a moment. But one thing I do want to draw to your attention is the pictures that you might have seen over in Instagram. I click share to Facebook, and lo I didn't put this directly into Facebook. It just came over from Instagram. So it, it makes it easy to post to two social media sites. So if you're, and I understand, I haven't tried to go the other way. You can post on Facebook and send over to Instagram also. So it's a two-way street. So feel free to learn these two. All right, I'm gonna briefly take us to none other than YouTube. I, I realized recently, in fact, just a couple days ago, I went and looked to see when I first posted a Toastmaster speech onto, onto YouTube 10 years ago. And of course, I'm the, the host, I guess, of three different Toastmaster clubs. So I've been saving all those recordings and posting them to YouTube. But it had occurred to me that instead of posting the entire meeting, I would just post, and it's very easy to clip out the individual speech. And when you clip out the individual speech, you then take and email that person the URL, you know, because they may not know where to find it, but you email them the URL. And lo and behold, they don't watch that once. All of a sudden, there's five, six, ten viewings of it. What's going on, I believe, is they're telling their friends, their family, their sisters, their brothers, their mothers and fathers. So they're all going, you, it's a good way to get the conversation going about Toastmasters and bringing people in the door. And that's what it's, what it's really all about. Now, uh, of course, I can't see your hands, but I had never heard of Nextdoor. I don't know if you have either, but in Nextdoor, uh, I'm, I live in Bridgewater Crossing, you know, south of Kissimmee, or south of Disney World. But when I moved in a couple of years ago, I, I somehow came across this next door, and I was able to see all the people that lived in the neighborhood. But little did I know that I could use it for hosting events. And you can too. It's very easy, straightforward. So if you're having a meeting, Gussy it up a little bit and call in an event and see if you can get people. I know, you, does it really work? Does it? Well, I'm going to turn our attention to Toastmaster Trixie. And Toastmaster Trixie is one of the ladies that did one of the TLIs over in Colorado. So let's hear from Toastmaster Trixie and what she thinks of next door. People are sitting at home and your neighbor literally right next door to you could be like, man, I really want to do something. This would be a great time to build my speaking skills, but I don't know where to go. Oh, then they happen to go on next door and they see this group or they see the event. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know Nancy next door has this event. I didn't even know she was in Toastmasters. And so that's a great little bonding way that you can connect again. And remember, that's what we're losing. So we really want to do that connection. I find next door to be a great opportunity for that. And in District 26, what, excuse me, what turned me on to next door, sorry, was that one of the gals, Sarah Beasley, I think it was two years ago, completely launched a club, had 
30 members. I think she even had over 30 members within 30 days. And what did she use? Next door. And I was like, get out of town. You did not. <laughs> that was amazing to me that in 30 days, I think it was even a little less, Sarah Beasley got everything out there, put up the branding, invited people. And yes, this was when we were an in-person club, but I find that to be even harder. I mean, you're telling all these people to come and leave their homes, and she did it. And I thought, wow, okay, I'm on next door just for my neighborhood and friends, but I didn't even know you could use it in this way. So well, it's a great opportunity. Well, it seems to me there's something to be said for next door. Easy to use. So go try it out. All right, let's take us a, uh, a little further. I went to Twitter. I haven't used Twitter in years. So, uh, but the first thing I looked or found when I went to Twitter and I typed in Toastmasters, look, I found Toastmasters International Public Relations. Seems to me that you and I should be following these guys. If we're on Twitter, follow your Toastmasters International Public Relations. I'm, I, I haven't verified it, but I bet you on here, you're going to find plenty of things that you can use to promote for your promotions or to promote, promote your club. So if you're on Twitter, go after Toastmasters Public Relations. Now, I found a few more that I just want to mention. And Pinterest, for instance, you're going to see lots of postings from Toastmasters International, as well as some other clubs. Also, the more professional site of LinkedIn. And I know for a fact, because I've already done it, I've been able to take and grab articles that they post here and then share them over to my social media posts. So this is a great place. And well, you can probably use LinkedIn. Just take advantage of this and Toastmasters International. And then one last one. This is more of the individual Toastmaster where they can, they're doing postings on TikTok where you can post something uh, about a meeting, how to speak better. But if, you, if you're a player on TikTok or like to go over there, you can find that there also. All right, we are all the way through social media. Any questions or comments after that tour around the block? Yeah, can you can you just add downtown Ocala to your list of clubs to do this for? <laughs> I have a question for you. This is Sonia Frederick. Yes. I, um, what are you using to for this presentation? What program are you using? Believe it or not, it is PowerPoint. It is? It is. I'm just zooming in and out. There's a zoom feature yeah. on PowerPoint. And so I'm Good. able to use that. So zoom feature. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much. You bet. Fred, we're at 1033. Okay. So we got it. And we're we're coming down to the wire. See, so we'll be able to wrap it up in time. Let's see. I want to just show you this, basically. I haven't done anything with it, but perhaps others have. And I went to Wikipedia, and I was able to come up with a list of all of the television stations in Florida. Now, it has their websites typically on here. But I also went to Wikipedia and found a list of all the radio stations in Florida. Guess what else? All of the newspapers in Florida. Now, you'll have to do your homework. Now, you're thinking, why do I need those? You want to try to do press releases if you can. And you want to try to get on their social or community calendar, I guess it's called. So if you can get on their community calendars, then you have another venue, another way of promoting your club. In fact, somebody else has already done it. And so we can see that the Orlando Conquerors are posting. This is on OrlandoWeekly.com as well as Weekend Toastmasters. So I just grabbed a couple. So you can see others are already there doing their posting onto community calendars. So it's another way to bring people into your club. All right. Fred, can I mention that in Staten Island, New York, 
there is a club that has a regularly regularly scheduled uh, TV show on the local community TV station. And they do a complete Toastmasters meeting uh, once a month. That is absolutely awesome. I would attend or go watch. I really would. But I, I've thrown a lot of things out there. But what I'm getting at is you can't do it all by yourself. There's no way. But what I'm asking of you or suggesting of you is that you turn to your fellow members. Uh, I, I turn to my daughter, Ginger, who is a Toastmaster, to help me get going on Instagram. But you may have people in your club that are good at one of these social medias. So if you can find one or two or three people that are good at that, you can enlist their help. And guess what? Come June, when it's time to turn the reins over to someone else, you've already got somebody schooled on VPPR. Now, you also want to work with your executive team, as you can see here, because all seven of you are responsible for bringing people into the club and keeping them there. And then you've already heard how the district is supporting you through Meetup and the uh, the Synergy Magazine and the other things Fred had mentioned. And then one last thing I wanna mention about Toastmasters International. You're probably thinking, what else can I post? Well, I'll tell you what else you can post is all of the articles that are in the Toastmaster Magazine. Many of them you can just go ahead and share over to your posting, or you can share them right into your site, go into your Facebook site. So these are all available for you. Now, let's see, I'm, I've been all the way around the block. So here's your call to action. Be true to the Toastmasters branding. And then make sure you have a handle on free Toast Toast. Pick one or two social media sites that you're going to develop. More if you can get the help to do it. Look at these other sites, see if you can get on some community calendars and really truly enlist the help of your fellow club members, your executive team and the district as well as Toastmasters International. I'm all the way around the block and I hope you learned something about being VPPR. We can do it, we can bring people in. That was my job for so long and I think that we can do it here too. Let's open it up for questions. I'll stop the share here, or if you want me to open something back up, I can pop right back in. I uh, have a question. Uh, this is Chad Cossier speaking from Orlando, Florida. Um, about free toast toast. Yes. If you could give it an elevator speech of why it is um, valuable versus using just easy speak, um, or excuse me, um, yeah, versus using the standard, yeah. standard stuff. Um, how would you sell it? Where is, where do you see the value? No, you're in a club that's using easy speak, aren't you? I am, and it's <laughs> mind boggling. I was a VPE for two years and I used easy speak and it was so hard, <laughs> I'm telling you. And then, it, I, 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 admittedly, I had used free toast hosts for years prior to that. Then we finally went back over to Free Toast Toast, and it was such a relief. I mean, it just takes all the pressure off. It, it's more intuitive. It's easier to use. On Easy Speak, you got to have total involvement from all the members, and they have to know how to use it. On Free Toast Toast, you don't. It's, it's quite simple. You go in, you can put your name on an agenda quickly, and, and it's got other uses. I, uh, like, I was the treasurer in another club and I was able to use, easily use free toast host to send out invoices to get renewals going, to give reminders. So it's got a, some nice features. It really does. VPE, you can see how many times somebody's been in a role. I know Easy Speak has that, but it's really a lot easier to use free toast host. Okay. Thank Anybody you. else? Other comment I want to make about free toast hosts is you can always run a report under the agenda section 
of any role you have ever participated in. So if you lose track of your speeches or you don't know if you've performed a role, you can click on the little, it looks like a person icon in the agenda and you can print either the whole club if you want to or your personal speech history or your personal functionary history. It's really very convenient. I presented this presentation to my Wyoming club last night and they said, if you remember anything, remember free toast host, keep it up and pop, I mean, populated with current information because that is vital to your club to always have that fresh because that's the first place that Toastmaster International visitors go. And I don't know about you, but I, on my Hunter's Creek Club, I had six visitors come in through the Toastmasters International website in one month. So that, that's a viable source of people coming into your club. So we need to be able to have a good site for them to land on. And Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Fred Bergeron Please. would like to make a comment. Go ahead. Um, two of them. Uh, back to free toast toast. A lot of people don't know this, but if you're trying to recruit members or bring old members back in, there's an option in free toast toast. There's a members tab. And if you click on the members tab, it gives you a listing of the past members and guests and visitors that were in your club. So that's a good way to reach back out to past guests and members to try to build back up your membership. So click on that membership tab. That's a good way to just start reaching out to people who have been in your club before either visited or are past members. That's one thing I'm, I'm trying to preach to one of my clubs right now, but they're very intimidated by free toast toast. So I guess when I take over as EPPR, I'm going to have to do that. But just some of them are real intimidated to just learn free toast toast. But once you learn it, that option is in there. Yeah. Number two, what I wanted to add about the branding, it's kind of hidden in the brand manual, but it is there. Um, when you use the Toastmasters logo, you cannot mix the Toastmasters logo with other logos. Like if you're doing a demo, say at an organization, you can't put that other organization's logo in with the Toastmasters hmm. logo. You only have to use the Toastmasters logo. You can't mix and match logos or if you're speaking at an event and you want to, you know, you want to mention maybe Toastmasters, you can't have, again, you can't have the Toastmasters logo and another one. You have to use one or the other. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. I didn't, I didn't see that. So good. But it's, good. Hidden. it's hidden, but it's there. Okay. Now, by the way, on Facebook, I forgot to tell you a little story. I was going to a chiropractor here in Orlando and the receptionist said, we're having to open a house in a couple of days. Why don't you come on in? Well, I didn't go to the open house because I had another appointment the following week. But when I got back the following week, I said, how'd your open house go? And she said, well, we had 180 people come in and 80 people signed up for their monthly service. I said, how do you advertise? And she says, on Facebook, just using Facebook. So there's, there's something there. It can work for us if we work it. So we had a great session. George, are you all, you, I, yep. I applaud you, everybody. Please yeah, give thank a you. Yeah. round of applause for that great session. I took